Hello guys, we're continuing our line of sight setup. However, before I go into Blender and do programming and show you what you need to do, uh, first off, I'm going to need uh, an explanation, visual explanation for uh, every one of you to understand why am I doing something. Because uh, setting up the proper way uh, for your line of sight to work uh, is slightly logistic logistical nightmare and uh, I just want to streamline the way of working and to for you to understand why am I doing something and why does it work like that so basically when you're creating uh, how should I say when you're creating a line of sight in the game there are a couple things you need to understand and uh, I suggest you basically be careful what you do so in a way uh, making everything before you really go into Blender and work uh, planning process uh, is in a way essential now as you can see I'm using Inkscape. Inkscape is a nice program you can download it for Windows, Mac, or Linux it is similar to Coral Draw and uh, it's very nice for anybody who wishes to create t-shirts and emblems uh, to be printed on because it's uh, easy to export and use for anybody who is interested in printing uh, this program is free to use so I suggest to anybody of course uh, this is not Photoshop it's not the uh, highest level of uh, editing however if you need small edits and small snippets uh, I suggest you use this program it's rather fast to use and easy seriously easy now I need three quarter Okay, maybe should be fine for now. Uh, the coloring, I uh, will take it like this. Let's duplicate one more. Okay, I'll uh, make it like this. And I don't like the color. Let me just go with too strong. Let me see what color we get. Like this. Okay, I'll do this. Okay. So what's the, what's the situation here? Now, as you saw in my Blender um, tutorial, I was uh, creating a line of sight. Now, uh, here I'm going to show you a small diagram of what you need to do and uh, how to set up properly line of sight and uh, what is what here. As you can see, uh, this is my enemy, this is the representation of uh, the pillar and this is the representation of our player of course this is not a dynamic environment and this is just in a way for you to understand why and what am I doing here so this is going to be like this should be fine Find this shoot. Okay. Here. Okay. Now I need to set this up. Okay, this one needs to go up. Okay. Uh, I should do the same with do the same with this one. And because it's bigger. Now, <clears throat> uh, why did I create this uh, this setup here? So, this selection here, just to make sure you understand which selection I'm talking about, I'm going to paint it red, and the player currently going to be... Okay. So, this selection here is the shadow that is cast by the uh, pillar, and uh, this, in a way, in game terms, will need to hide our player and as you remember that you saw in my video uh, I created that shadow to be dynamic and to follow or reversely follow our enemy and the one who is seeking the player so uh, why is the shadow important 
and uh, how does everything work? Well, this one, this selection, let me just rewrite this. Uh, this selection here. This is the line of sight of our enemy. And for instance, if it's looking in our player, we wish for our enemy to follow the player, to go in its direction. However, in this case, as you can see, we have an overlap between two line of sights. So, which one is more important? Basically, this is the reason why I'm, in a way, taking so long and uh, in its explanation. One line will be like this. Okay. So, <clears throat> here I have my enemy line of sight, and here is the pillar. Shadow. So, when I have enemy line of sight set up and it's following and it's set on my player, basically my enemy, the enemy is following the player, uh, this requires one logic set. So, in a way, one logic, one AI setup. And that is as long as the player is seen by this he is uh, he's going to be enemy is going to follow the player now in the case when we have the pillar and uh, we have the shadow we need to create a second logic set that will basically disable this setup here and uh, enable a secondary setup now which means that Whenever a player enters the set, enters the shadow and becomes in a way invisible for our enemy, uh, we need to create an empty, base, uh, create a target, which will be somewhere where an enemy wishes to go because that was the last location where he saw the player, and uh, we, we wish in a way to create an opportunity for our player to stay hidden. The best way to do this now, for now I do not need this. I'll delete it. The best way to create this is that, for instance, our player is, I don't know, this, in a way this large. And we need to create a line that in a way represent that our player has hid himself in the shadow. Because once he touches this line, he is completely in shadows. Now, in game terms, this shadow can be usually this, this shadow, this shadow, can be bigger and di in different shape or something like that. So you need to uh, determine that the player size and the shadow size uh, have certain points where they meet. So, for instance, there is a chance that your shadow I do apologize, this one was invisible. Your shadow would look like like this, something like this. Or even have a cube like this. So setting up your proper shadow setup is uh, essential and this is why I'm spending more time in explaining why this works like this. So this area here, this area here, between the shadow line and here, let me just use this to make my point. So between these two green arrows, this area over here should be approximately the size of the player. Um, because once the player gets into the shadow, he cannot be seen by the enemy and uh, he has touched this setup that we created. So in Blender this set, internal setup of the shadow is important because it's telling us that the player is hidden and that the player is behind basically a wall or something. And in this case uh, because as you can see uh, <laughs> from from your own eyes, uh, uh, we cannot see the player because he is behind the shadow. However, when we are creating a logic, when we are creating a certain scenario, we need to know what our setup is doing. So, 
Once the player has gone into shadow, let me just reduce this. We need for this setup to disappear. And what do we need? Well, the player is in shadows. The shadows are dynamic. And once the player exits the shadow, now where is the exit point? The exit point can be something like this, or it can be basically a closer to the area of where we defined our shadow. So you have to, again, have a certain way of, a certain feeling of perspective where you can uh, see something and uh, you, this is basically creating an algorithm that allows us to create again uh, AI that works. So, our player has entered the shadow, we have destroyed the previous setup and we need to create a secondary setup on the outside. So what does this setup do? This setup that is on the outside is basically telling us that the player has exited the shadow, uh, the shadow area. So, in a way, we know, we know, and the computer can know what is going on, because the computer is switching between enemy line of sight and the uh, setup for the shadow. And uh, this is, in a way, why, why I need to explain what am I going to do and uh, how I'm going to do this in Blender before I start doing this in Blender because uh, if I explain it now you can understand what, it, what is going to uh, happen in uh, the setup. Now, uh, as I said before, uh, we need to create also a decoy. Now this decoy can be... Let me just this is going to be our decoy, so basically, our player has entered the shadow and while he is in the shadow, this decoy exists. So, uh, how do we know that this decoy exists and uh, how did we create it? Well, if you remember our previous setup, we had something like this. This was the sensor that told us that the player has entered the shadow and when we create this setup this setup of new sensors, uh, we can create this empty. Why is this empty? Why? This is going to be an empty or a target or something like that. Uh, now, why does this exist? Well, this exists for our enemy to have a basic representation of where the player went and in what direction he needs to move. So, to create normal, uh, to create the feeling that the enemy has, uh, well, intelligence, uh, we need to create an algorithm that works and that behaves like similar like a basic AI. So, like I said, our player entered the shadow, we destroyed this setup, I'll just move it for now, and we created the outer shell that is going to say when our player is exiting the shadow. Because the shadow moves when we move our enemy, and our enemy is going to try to track this. Our shadow, for instance, will not move like this, but something like this. Of course, we need to move this. This is not an issue in Blender, because we can just parent set, create a parent setup, so no big there. Something like this, okay. However, we need for this object. I have an object. Okay. Now, for this object that was created, we need it to be static because we wish for this guy to get over here. Of course, we need to um, have a certain feeling how fast the enemy is going and so forth, not to create, uh, in a way, a situation where a player cannot keep up with AI. It's not in pro This is, in a way, how should I say, uh, more in game, de in game depth and setups. Uh, we're not addressing this now. We are addressing this logic that we uh, we need to create. So, our I'll do this. Uh, I'm going to 
going to set it blue and I'm going to set the color of it to be slash eh. So for instance, uh, is our enemy visually following the player or is he following the empty? Uh, in this case, this box. So we need to be careful what we do. For instance, in a situation where our enemy has reached this point, we can give him an AI option basically to move his line of sight from left to right, basically moving his head and uh, to create more interactive environment. So working with your uh, line of sight setup can be tedious, can be extremely painful. Uh, however, once you have done this, you can, as I said, uh, use this module to copy it and use it um, in any other situation. So once you have created this, basically you use it in any time you use. You need a line of sight setup, more or less. So that's a good thing. And again, if you wish there are things you can do more, you can do less. Of course. So what is important? What, well, the second thing, the second. The thing that is important uh, is when our player is exiting the, how should I say, it? Uh, exiting the shadow area. Now here's the level higher in programming. Now if he exits over here and he's behind this line of sight, he should not be seen. So do we need to create an empty? We do not. If he exit from this side, do we need to create an empty? No, we do not. And because this line of sight will detect, if it is able, to detect our layer. Now, this is just a basic line of sight setup. Of course, I'm not uh, doing a setup for sound. I'm not doing setup for uh, hits uh, now, currently. I'll do that eventually. Uh, you can do setup for sound, you can do setup for uh, hit being shot at or something like that. And in a way it will use similar mechanics like here, of course, before you create anything, create a small basically logic step or plan that will uh, work properly and uh, in a way has a good AI construction that, who, that it has a good interactive uh, setup and yeah. Uh, I suggest, of course, you can do this with pen and paper, you can do this in Inkscape, you can do this however you want, but creating a workflow plan is before you go into Blender is advised. I seriously advise it. And uh, because later on in programming steps, you know what you are doing, and uh, basically, if you forgot something, you can always go back and see what you forgot. So, uh, just to, as one will say, let's go through the plan once more and explain everything. This area over here, red, it represents the shadow of the pillar. Uh, these are the exit points for our player. And this is the line of sight of our enemy. So we do not need an enemy that can constantly track us and constantly see us. Of course, we can create an enemy that has a spherical uh, line of sight, like a beholder or something that has thousand eyes and make it a tough uh, boss or something like that. I can understand that. Uh, needs of the game. Okay, however, when we are talking about uh, shooters, we wish for our enemies to behave like uh, normal AI in terms of normal humans that they go to you or try to reach you, and if they cannot see you, they look left and right and so forth. So, like I said, before you start creating and doing with the line of sight, uh, be aware how your enemy is going to behave, what your player can do uh, in order to create a setup that has, well, logical meaning, that has some logical merits and so forth. So, 
The thing also to remember is that you need two setups, basically one inside the shadow that will disappear and create the other one. So these two are connected in that way. Because if we touch this with our player inside the shadow, we need to create one that is on the outside and uh, this one tells us when the player has exited the shadow because uh, for instance we have another guard that is uh, looking in similar direction for instance let me just say this is our other guard and uh, he's for some reason looking in this direction and because our player is in shadow here once he exits this AI will try to track him down so because it will switch this is a switch between which of these logics has priority now you may ask, well, what if I have an AI, for instance this guy, and he is looking in the direction of the shadow and the player, basically in real life sees the player, how does this work? Well, you remember that this guy over here uh, is connected with this shadow. In this position, this shadow will have approximately okay, location over here. So, yeah, our player did exit the shadow. However, we set up that once he has exited the shadow, the main logic that has a priority for our bad guy and his line of sight is this one. So, uh, level this out in a way. Because this shadow is a dynamic one, uh, you can also create additional setups for multiple enemies, and uh, basically how many enemies do you have, you can set up each shadow for them, and so this player will, this enemy will see our player in this situation, uh, in this situation, sorry and this one will not and uh, because the shadow in terms of this one is set up in a different direction because the shadow is a sensor it will not uh, overload a lot your uh, computer and uh, your setup so you can do more than one and if you keep it that it does not have uh, collision bounds it does not have the shadow itself it does not have collision bounds, it does not have uh, visibility, it is just a sensor, it basically is rendered like that. So the only thing that has collision sensor is this, but it's invisible, this one has collision sensor, but it's invisible, and this of course in-game is invisible, and that reduces the render time, it's just data, and as such it will do a slight CPU load, but Trust me, this load uh, is extremely low and uh, it will not... Uh, mm, you can create, like I said, once you create this one and one bad guy with one setup, uh, recreating another bad guy with his own shadow setup is uh, not, not a problem and uh, I suggest you keep that in mind that each enemy has its own internal uh, logic and so forth in order to have a proper AI behavior so yeah keep that in mind now well this is for now I'll see to create this setup in Blender uh, like I said uh, I'm quite I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking uh, because I showed you this uh, I have two options I can recreate this in Blender uh, or I can uh, just create a file and you can download it, however, 
The point here is to show the basics, to show how each and everything is done step by step for everybody. So everybody who wishes to know will have an opportunity to see and in a way experience and try to recreate everything I do because all of my tutorials are for anybody who is uh, just getting into logic of uh, creating a game or something like that so in a way one will say this is for a child however I'm saying this is for everybody from age of 7 to age of 99 in a way so they can understand what's going on and why I'm doing something step by step. Now this video is going to end here, I'll create additional uh, video with Blender and uh, this is in a way 3.1, <laughs> I do apologize, video 3.1 and we're going to have a 3.2 because it's going to be a work in Blender using what, everything I explained here. So yeah. That should be it for this video and hope to see you soon in the next one.